<clears throat> okay, just recap. Huh? So for chapter four, we are talking about beam. Huh? So chapter one, chapter two, uh, chap chapter one, we talk about uh, uh, spring. Uh, then chapter two, chapter three, we talk about bar and truss. Uh, then chapter four, we talk about beam. So beam. Uh, scenario we look at as, as you can see on the screen here we look at uh, a beam that able to uh, do uh, uh, able to show the, the the behavior of bending effect under the loading and you will keep seeing the word transverse uh, transverse loading so you will see uh, point one and point two over here you have a force <clears throat> And under this force, you will have uh, a moment, you have uh, rotation, and you have uh, um, uh, displacement in y direction. Yeah. Okay. So you have uh, v, you have uh, uh, rotation, you have uh, force, you have uh, bending moment. So uh, here we have a vertical force and a rotation. And in this case, we don't have the FX in this case. We don't have the U displacement because um, uh, for beam, if you have a if you have a loading in X direction, it doesn't create any moment. Yeah. If you have an X direction, we don't have any moment because uh, if you bring back the concept of uh, of a uh, moment. Um, moment equal to f times the distance. So if your x is in the axial direction, then you don't have a, a moment generated by the x component. So for chapter four, we only interested in vertical uh, component, which is y, and a rotation uh, action, huh? the rotation plus the moment. Um, just to recap the direction for our parameter here. So for bending moment, it's always positive when we have an anticlockwise direction. We always assume, we start with our problems. Uh, if we do not know uh, if the problems, uh, if the, st the question in a question, we don't know the direction, we will always assume it is anticlockwise uh, first. Then when you do calculation, you get negative, it means is in a, another direction. Okay, so we always assume positive uh, anticlockwise first, and then for the force is always uh, for the uh, rotation always same with the moment uh, anticlockwise positive, and then for the force and uh, displacement will follow the y axis uh, positive. Okay, so what we have covered uh, in our previous uh, lecture is that uh, we look at what is the shear force capital V in this case, capital V, shear force and moment. So we, we already derive uh, equation for uh, bending moment M in term of modulus Yang E and I and also the displacement. Yeah. So we already derive an equation for shear force capital V and moment. Yeah. So we already see uh, the, the equation uh, already uh, and we stop at uh, stop at there is a steps when we derive the beam stiffness. So um, step, step one is that we always label the location, the node and the element number like what we did so far. So it's quite standard uh, every time we derive for stiffness matrix. The first is we look at the element type um, and then you start labeling the nodes and the element number. OK, then the second one you choose for a, a function and the function is for displacement and we use a polynomial equation where you will see uh, the polynomial uh, pattern will be uh, constant value times x cubed uh, plus constant value uh, x squared plus constant value x plus a4. So we look at up to uh, 
the power of three, uh, the power of three so far. Uh. So of course, a more complex uh, scenario, uh, you look at uh, x power five, x power four, but uh, for for chapter four, if for this module, it's sufficient to start with uh, polynomial equation with the uh, uh, third degree, uh, the power three uh, level. Uh. So from here, we derive this equation. Yeah. So if you're not clear, you go back to the previous lecture. And then we, we, we have something called the shape function. Yeah? The, the, the displacement equal to shape function times the displacement. So uh, go back uh, to the previous slides if you're not sure what, what is all these things. Yeah? So today we're going to combine uh, what we learned so far into a very big uh, signal matrix. Okay? So we already derived what is the, the, the shape function, n1, n2, n3, n4 based on the equation we derived previously. Okay, we arrive at this equation when we have a uh, element that under deformation, uh, under deformation on both ends, uh, we have a load at both ends, then there's a bending or deformation happen to our object here. So we, we, we arrive at these two equations. So bending moment equal to m, small m. When you see a small m means it refer to the element. Yeah? So bending moment equal to EI, uh, double differentiation of your uh, displacement. Yeah? Double displacement, uh, double differentiation, or you dif differentiate two times of your uh, displacement equation. While for the shear force, again, shear, the word shear force, we already discussed what is normal force. What is shear force? Yeah, shear force is looking at the for, at the force component and the relation between the the area. So if the force is parallel to the area, it becomes shear force. If the force is normal to the area, then uh, it becomes normal force. So in this case, we're looking at shear force. So shear force capital V is E I and triple triple differentiation means we take the uh, displacement we differentiate three times, then we get the shear force. Yeah. So these two equation is important in this chapter. So when you when you ask to find a bending moment, you straight away write this equation, you'll get one mark. If you ask to solve shear force, you write this equation, you get one mark. Yeah? So again, moment, bending moment for chapter four or for beam will be double differentiation of your displacement. Shear force is triple this uh, differentiation of your uh, vertical displacement. Okay, we have arrived at step three. Today we'll look at step four. So step four is to start deriving the stiffness matrix, which is our K. Yeah. So we will use uh, a direct equilibrium approach. Direct equilibrium means all the force equal to zero, all the moment equal to zero. Okay, and then we pull out these two diagram over here. So one is the, the normal uh, beam that under uh, two constraint or two support at the end. And then this one is the, the effect of the loading. <coughs> then we will have the capital V. Capital V here is force. Capital V is the force. Uh, is a shear loading or shear force. Yeah. So if you back to chapter one and chapter two, this one become capital F. This is the capital F. But when it come to beam chapter four, we change the notation from capital F to capital V to be sent is a shear force. Shear force. Yeah. Again, shear force is parallel to the area over here, cross section area. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the moment. One is again by default is anti-clockwise positive and to balance the, the to counter to counter the effect we have a couple uh, on other side for example in this case you will see that uh, on the right hand side we have a anti-clockwise which is give you a positive moment to balance this side we have a clockwise moment in the other side and for the shear loading 
uh, shear, shear force on the left hand side going up. To balance this force, uh, to balance this force, you have another couple on another side where it's going down, V. So this diagram, second diagram over here is to uh, is for us to use the direct equilibrium approach where this diagram show you the equilibrium of your shear loading or shear force and moment. So this diagram show you the balance of the system. And this one show you the typical or the, the common uh, behavior that we have for a beam, uh, for, for one beam, uh, for one beam. All right. Now, um, if you look at element one, if we compare these two diagram, yeah, so direct comparison, we can see that uh, force one y uh, for small f here, small f one y, small f one y here will be equal to shear loading capital V here. Okay, clear, yeah, uh, all of you clear, yeah? understand, yeah? Okay, so. Similar, okay, you can write the the force, all right, the, the shear loading. Remember the two equations just now, the moment uh, equation. The moment is double differentiation. Shear force is triple differentiation of your uh, vertical uh, displacement. So you just write back uh, the, the definition of your shear loading is EI and triple uh, differentiation of your function uh, function so you know that uh, why there's a zero here because uh, this is x equal to zero over here because your 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 displacement uh, your displacement small v here is in the x function so in this location point one here is x equal to zero that's why we can write v uh, v in a function of uh, x equal to zero yeah so this is a, a mathematics uh, presentation. So it is, is something like uh, when you learn about a function in uh, calculus or in your advanced mathematics, it's the same. So this is what, what the location of your x. Yeah? So when uh, the first, for your first point, first point of a point one, your x equal to zero, all right? then you can uh, call out uh, the, the equation, all right? We will get this equation, all right? EI divided by L trip, uh, L cube uh, times all these terms, all right? Now, how do we get this one? I'm going to explain this one, yeah? Because uh, after I explain this one, stop me if you're not able to understand. Because later on, I will speed up and then uh, because the step will be the same for another side, uh, for another pair. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to explain this one, yeah? How we get this one. So before we move on, again, remind yourself, we have two equations to, to memorize for today. Uh, two big equations. Moment will be EI times double depreciation of your vertical displacement. Shear force will be triple uh, uh, differentiation of your vertical displacement. Yeah, one is double, one is triple. Okay, I'm going to show you how we get this equation. So we know that um, uh, V equal to EI, uh, V is triple differentiation. And position one will be your x equal to zero. So this is the lengthy equation that we have, the polynomial equation that we derive uh, previously in class. This is the polynomial equation, very lengthy. And it's also explained how we get the n1, n2, n3, n4, the, the shape function. Okay. So if you're not sure uh, what is this equation, the second line equation, go back to the previous lecture. Yeah. Uh, what important today is that uh, you remember what is the moment, uh, moment differentiation equation, uh, and uh, uh, the vertical shear loading uh, equation. So 
if you want to triple uh, differentiate of this equation here, the vertical displacement equation. So if you assume this one is A, this one is B, means that uh, this term here, because it's very lengthy, we don't want to disturb it. So you can write, okay, let me, Okay, I'm going to ask a question, a very simple question for mathematics. Okay, uh, Lai, this question is for you. What happens if we differentiate one times of our Vx here uh, towards x? What will we get? If you assume this one is a, ax power 3 plus bx power 2 plus uh, this one, maybe we can name this one as uh, c, yeah, x. So what do you get, uh, Lai? If you have an equation of a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus a four. So what you want when you want to do one differentiation to x, what do you get? Three a s two plus is two square, two huh? square. Okay, two b x. 2bx and then no more plus c plus c yeah say good okay then uh, the next question i'm going to ask uh, katana so katana if we have we, we want to have double differentiation what do we get from this equation 3ax plus 3b plus 2b uh, again, your answer. 3ax. Sorry, 6. Three, uh, 3ax. Uh. No. 6ax uh, six ah, plus 6ax six plus 2b. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether Singy is still there. Uh, Singy, you there? Yes. Okay, Singy, what? What is the result when we triple differentiate the equation? 6a. 6a, yeah. So uh, by having this, this uh, concept, we're going to uh, we're able to reach the results of uh, the equation that I showed you just now. So I'm going to show you the, the one that I put on the PowerPoint slides. Okay, so this is the one that uh, you, you mentioned just now. All right. this, this is answer, the answer by lie. And we double, uh, we get the answer given by Katana. Then the third one, we get the answer given by Singi. So we then after that, we replace the A and B inside uh, all this. Like I just simplified the equation. Yeah. So um, at the end, uh, for example, the 6A, what does it mean? It means that uh, we have six times this term. Yeah. So we 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 take the we know that the vertical shear loading the shear loading equal to e i a triple differentiation of your uh, put, uh your your displacement. So you just copy this one. So you have e i, and then you look at the, the, the these two these two equation because we want to put our term in e i divided by l cube. Uh, because we want to balance the, the equation uh, when we put them into uh, the global matrix. Uh, so we have an early treatment for to our uh, mathematic model in this case. So of course you, you can you can just write this this whole thing uh, in your answer, but uh, we recommend you to put in EI divided by L cube. And then this one become 12V1 plus 6L uh, your rotation number one minus 12 uh, v2 this one is the displacement at point number two plus six l your rotation number two uh, so you just expand this one and then you'll get the blue color equation okay it's the same huh? you just uh, factor the ei over l cube outside and then you rewrite the equation all right so we move on 
So in this case, we can write our uh, differentiation, the triple differentiation of our vertical displacement will be equal to uh, 12 divided by L3. I mean, we further this uh, further uh, rearrange in in this term, yeah, in V1 minus V2 term, and rotation one minus rotation two. We want to put in this because uh, it will help us to to write the uh, stiffness matrix later on. Yeah. Okay. So after you get this equation. Okay. After you get equation, we stop at uh, the the shear loading at point number one, and then we go for uh, moment at point one. Which is uh, you look at this point. Moment at this point is clockwise. So when it's clockwise, when it's clockwise, then we know that the magnitude of the moment will get negative sign because it's clockwise. Uh, it's clockwise. Our moment by default, or uh, in standard uh, assumption, we will assume we will assume that our moment is positive when it's is uh, anti-clockwise. So uh, in this case, you will see that. Uh, because we have a couple uh, moment over here. So this side, okay, this side is referring to this diagram. This side is referring to the free body diagram. Uh, the free body diagram, free body diagram. This is the, the normal, the normal beam diagram. This is a beam diagram. Okay, so left hand side is a refer to beam diagram. Right hand side refer to free body diagram. Huh? Okay, so there's a negative sign there because in the free body diagram, your moment is clockwise. So you have a negative sign in front of your uh, moment there. Then recall the definition for moment. Moment is the double differentiation of your uh, this one, uh, this equation. All right, this equation. Double differentiation. So you repeat the same for the for the uh, moment. Yeah. So you have a negative EI double differentiation of your uh, vertical displacement divided by x square. And again, your x location here is zero. It's on the uh, uh, origin here. Then you call back. Huh? You do the same steps as what we did for the force. You bring the the this this equation, the second line, this equation, and then you do the same. Uh, you differentiate one time, two time. Uh. Actually, you just use the the second equation, six a x plus two b, and then you put into this one. Uh. So this is your you will write in this term, uh, in this form. Okay, we do the same for point number two. So point number two, again, left hand side refer to this diagram, right hand side refer to free body diagram. F2y equal to y there's a negative because it's pointing down. Our y is positive going up. The 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 shear loading, a uh, shear force is going down. So that's why you get a negative sign here. Okay. So uh, you compare the first line and the third line, the differences is only the negative sign. Yeah. So uh, you can you can just uh, add a negative sign in front and then you move on to the uh, moment. Okay, it's just a uh, negative sign of the point number one. Yeah. So at this moment, you should know why there's a, suddenly there's a negative uh, inside the equation. Yeah, clear. Uh, all of you, lie your right with a negative sign. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then we move on to moment number two. So again, left hand side refer to this diagram. Uh, left hand side, yeah. left hand side refer to this diagram. Right hand side refer to free body diagram. So M2 here will equal to this term. So this, if you look at free body diagram, is a 
uh, anticlockwise uh, direction. So we get a positive sign for the moment. And what you did is that you you take the positive sign for uh, for you compare with the 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 M1 here. We just make this one become positive. So how you get positive? You times negative. So the whole equation will, will get the same like M1, uh, M, M here. Okay, so you get uh, this one in in the uh, in the uh, positive sign here. Okay, you 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 do uh, you do the the calculation. Yeah. So I just I just for your convenience I write out the, the answer for you. Okay. So again, it's a triple uh, differentiation. However, however, you have to understand. Uh, take note. Uh, for point two and point uh, for point two, your L uh, sorry not L your V X function is V L yeah. For one and two, your V X your your uh, vertical displacement the X here is zero yeah. For these two pair for point one point one X equal to zero. For point two x equal to l, so when you do the differentiation, uh, you need to substitute inside there. Meaning, you go back to this equation. You go back to this equation. So um, when you take the the equation over here. For example, if you take the first, uh, the first one, the x inside there. If you have x, uh, okay. For first one, the vertical you don't have, but for moment, moment is double differentiation. There's x there, so you need to times the x value for the uh, when you have the differentiation. Yeah? So this is the reminder when you when you did your derivation, yeah. Okay, so we have this four equation, one, two, three, four, four equation. Then we put in a matrix form. So what is the general form of the matrix form? Will be this one, yeah. So um, by looking at the, the the body of the structure of the matrix form, um, I don't think I I need to go back to explain how you put these four equation in in this form, yeah, because we already already cover so many times in. Uh, for chapter one, two, and three, uh, you should already know how to derive, how to put all these four into uh, matrix form. In the force, in left hand side, the stiffness matrix K, and the displacement. You can you can uh, treat it as F equal to K D. So the the uh, the the force component, the first component on the left here. Uh, for beam, you will see moment. Yeah, you will see moment. For chapter one, two, three, you will see F one, X, F two, X, and so on. But uh, uh, for for beam, you will see moment. Yeah, you see, you have moment. So don't confuse between uh, beam, bar, and spring. Yeah? Okay. So um, if you put in the displacement uh, V one. Your rotation one, v two, uh, rotation two. So again, it can be pair. So this is point one. This two is point two. So same with the location of your matrix here. It will be v one, rotation one, v two, rotation two. So again, you can draw the location of your matrix like what we did previously. Yeah, if you already forget lah. Okay, so how do we know that uh, we have twelve over here? So twelve is v one v one. So you look for v one. Yeah, uh, you look for v one. So this is your f one, right? So the first one is for f one. So f one is twelve v one. So you, you there's a twelve there. So and then this is also v one, but this is a moment. So you look at moment. Moment v1, uh, pi 1, 
this one. Yeah. So V1 is this location. So you have to know how to put the equation over there. Yeah. So if you already forget, uh, go back to the matrix. Uh, there you can find the appendix in Moodle. Uh, okay, and then how you get the, the formula. For example, how you get the equation from the matrix for F1. You take the first row times column here. So how you get, you take 12 times this one, you get uh, 12 V1 plus this one times the second one, 6L rotation one, plus this one times this one. So you get a negative 12 V2 and this one times this one, you have plus 6L rotation number two. So with this one, actually you get back this form. Yeah, with of course with the constant value in front, E I divided by L3. Okay. So this also explains why uh, we have a treatment in our mathematics model. We 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 need to put in E I divided by L cube because uh, all other uh, have the same constant value. So when you have a constant constant value for force and moment, then only you can put into a matrix uh, matrix form like that. Okay. Um, any question for this matrix form? Any 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 one of you want to ask me question? Katana, are you clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Lai, you all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Singi, Singi, you there? Yes, Proceed. I just come back. Okay. You clear with the transform, uh, how we transform the equation into matrix form? Yes, I understand. Okay, good. So in this, uh, in today, uh, today we already reached uh, how we reached the uh, Stimner matrix. Uh. So uh, this, this, this is the Stimner matrix K. Uh. So again, if you compare chapter one, two, three, you're able to see the differences. When you come to chapter four, you need to use the K in this form. When you do spring or when you do uh, bar, then you have to use the, the, the respective uh, K for that particular uh, body, okay? So again, today, there are two important equation, which is uh, moment and Vertical uh, displacement, uh, not displacement, vertical uh, force, uh, which is, we call it a shear force. So for a moment, we have double differentiation of your vertical displacement, V, while for the capital V, which is a shear force, one is moment, one is force, or for your force is triple. And then, uh, I don't expect you to memorize the, the lengthy equation for uh, this one, for the vertical displacement, but uh, you should able to write this out uh, somewhere, you know, from somewhere, from, uh, you should have this equation ready. If someone asks you what is the displacement, vertical displacement for beam, the, the fundamental equation, uh, you, 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 at least you know where to find this equation, yeah? So I don't expect you to memorize this one, but at least you know where to find it when you need it. Yeah? Okay. So again, this this displacement, uh, this this equation is for this case. Yeah, is for this case only. Yeah, it's for this case only. So uh, this is the universal diagram. So later on, we will see one point maybe inside the wall, one point maybe uh, on the support, and so on. Then we have a bounding condition that apply to this general equation okay so we arrive at a stimulus matrix uh, i think we we can stop here for today the um, next week we will do uh, we will show you how to assembly uh, the the all the equation all the stimulus together so uh, today we stop at um, the Stimner matrix de derivation. Is that okay? Yes, sir. 
Okay. Uh, then I stop the recording for today.